What's a good work? What is it that establishes the kingdom? If repentance is the, is the, the beginning establishment. Particularly, repentance establishes the kingdom in me. But what is it? What is? What does a? What does repentance? What kind of relationship with God does that mean? A real one. A real one. What is real to God? His presence. Relationship. What is the premise? What is the presence a promise of? Why do you have God's presence? Why does He have yours? Love. Love. What's a practical, biblical word for love relationship? Obedience. Yes, it's one of the, that's, that is part of it. It is. What's another biblical, practical word for love? Marriage. Keep going. Another word like it? Covenant. Covenant. Covenant, Covenant establishes. <laughs> oh my God. Covenant establishes the This is my new covenant. He said. Man, my blood. That's what he was after. I'm putting this kingdom on the ground. How do I do it? You love covenant. So what was going on in Rome then? You had a bunch of individuals with covenant with God. But what didn't you have? Covenant, covenant community. Covenant. You don't have covenant community. Now this doesn't apply to as much as evangelistic men. Ministries. I'm just giving you the big picture. You don't you don't have the kingdom established in a city until you have covenant relationships among the people. So if they're divided over all these Jew Gentile things, what do they have to be established? Mm-hmm. So what does Paul do? Preach the gospel of the kingdom, and then Romans 15, which you preached on before you left, Mike. You guys have to connect because until you connect, you're not going to defy the power over this city. Because you're not you're not establishing the kingdom. So where it is it's in Romans that Paul tells them, chapter sixteen, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Wow. See, is that's not just generic devotional language? <laughs> so in other words, if you get what I'm saying, you will soon establish this. You'll establish the kingdom in Rome, which suddenly, by by nature of your established community, you establish the kingdom which automatically addresses the principality over your city. <laughs> the God of peace. So, social harmony is peace. The God of peace. The God of covenant love will soon crush Satan under your feet. God's goal through all kingdom demonstrations is to establish the kingdom. And that happens through covenant. That's why Jesus always preached repentance. But John preached repentance. We have today. Now, if I were a preacher, you've got to preach repentance. Well, yes, amen. And then some say, well, that's kind of a work. It's like you don't understand the kingdom. You're getting all theological. You're getting self-conscious. You're, you're too absorbed in reformed theology or something. You're not thinking kingdom. To believe is to make a covenant. So you must repent. Faith is persuaded. Of course it's a free gift. No one is challenging that, but you have to enter into covenant. That's why you're baptized. <laughs> you're saying, I'm dead to the old. I'm in covenant with you. But what is covenant with God? It's not the external pressure of obeying rules. It's love connection. You're in covenant. You're sons. Sonship is the expression of covenant. God's covenant is new. He doesn't just say, okay, here's the deal. Here's the treaty. I gave you the, this deal. You give me this deal. No, it's like, I recreate you and make you my children. So now we're both in covenant with one another. It's something that's done in the spirit. It's in your heart. It's written there. There's the covenant charter. Is. In the Old Testament, Torah was the charter of the covenant. It wasn't bad. It just couldn't recreate. It couldn't make a new covenant. So now that Torah is written on our heart. It's an internal compulsion. Now, when you get up in the morning and you, you start seeking God, you start praying in tongues, you guys are worshiping together, you're just enjoying covenant with God. That's what you're in covenant relationship. I mean, since the Lord's been downloading this into my life, when I spend my time with Him, when it's one on one, I'll just feel His covenantal surrounding protection. I'll 
feel embraced and loved. It's very difficult to describe. And all the language of Scripture has become covenant language. Because covenant language, there, there, is, there is an agreement, but it's, it's not based on the external agreement or the external pressures. It's internalized. It's love. It's a mutual surrender. That's really the word covenant isn't used that often in the New Testament. What is used is this. But this is what it means. Love. God, Paul told the Galatians, he did not liberate you so that you could feed your flesh. But so that through love, you would serve one another. <laughs> That's covenant. You began in the spirit. You're going to finish in the flesh. You have the spirit. That's covenant. God is in you now. You're in him. That's real covenant. That's when the kingdom is established. When people repent, they establish the kingdom. And when they form community, which is just to illustrate the further application of this, when they form community, that's covenant. That establishes the kingdom. So if you've got a bunch of disciples who love the Lord, but all they do is assemble, they're not in covenant relationship, then you don't have the kingdom established. Not in a city. Not in a way that shakes the city. Does that make sense? This is why, for me, this part applies to you less, but it illustrates where I'm coming from. This is why I'm so desperately concerned about the identity of the church. Because really my interest isn't the church. My interest is the kingdom in this larger picture. And it, it getting done on, for, on this side of eternity. Which is supposed to look like this. So for you, I want you to fit into the larger picture. As individual men, you are sons of God. You're in beautiful covenant with God. You, you cultivate sonship in order to cultivate this covenant. And that, that, that will just be the common denominator of every aspect of your life. The common denominator, the common foundation is your sonship. I exhort you to that, and I would like to discuss the different elements of, of sonship with you course of our time.